Now, if you have a big sum of cash and you're looking to deposit them into something safe, I have this whole presentation for you. But before you get there, let me ask you this question also. Uh, this sum of cash, is it coming from a year-end bonus or is it from some policy maturity? So without further ado, let's dive on to things and it starts with fixed deposits. I've sourced the land for the best fixed deposit rates and many platforms haven't refreshed the latest rates from you know the providers itself. So let me show you what I found. Over here is UOB's promotion. This is until 31st January only and they are going to pay you 0.5% per annum for 10 month tenure deposit. Minimum deposit is $20,000. So between the three big banks of Singapore, I guess UOB's offer right now is the most attractive but still, uh, make sure it's convenient also. Because at the end of the day, 0.5% of 20000 is just like $100. So not too big of an amount. If you have UOB online banking already, I think it's a good idea that you can look for to park your monies. Then what about other banks? I found also under RHB, a 12-month deposit at 0.55%. But that offer has been beaten by something else I found, which is by CIMB. Also, 12-month deposit, if you're a personal banking client, 0.65%. So, slightly higher. But if you're willing to do an 18-month tenure, then it increases up to 0.75%. I think CIMB has the better offer, and they also have a referral promotion going on. If you, husband, wife, you all can split up the accounts, then you can actually refer your own spouse and probably qualify for this $30 shopping voucher. And do note a few terms and conditions. The referee must not hold any CIMB deposit account or have closed any accounts recently in the last 12 months. And the minimum for this referral process is $30,000 instead. So if fixed deposit rates are too low, let's move on to the second idea for today. Idea number two, the Singapore Savings Bond that is going to be issued for February 2022. Subscription must be done before 26th of January. And let me show you the interest rates. If you keep it for one year, the interest rate is 0.52%. So it actually beats the UOB offer itself. If you keep for full 10 years, the average return increases up to 1.64%. So the good part about Singapore Savings Bond is that it's flexible. You can withdraw any time that you want, but you need to pay a $2 transaction fee. So that's the key difference. So especially if you're doing big amounts, this $2 doesn't really make a, too much of a difference. The maximum amount you can do for a simple savings bond, just a recap, is $200,000. And simply go to the ATM or do iBanking to make this transaction. What I like about Singapore savings bond is that if interest rates increase, think about it, for 2022, simply redeem this and then buy something else with a higher interest. So in my opinion, fixed deposits, they lock you up for 10 months, 12 months or 18 months. And once interest rates increase, you are unable to participate in it. And we're expecting 2022 to see certain interest rate increments. So all in all, I do believe this second idea, Singapore Savings Bonds, might be superior to the fixed deposit. So with that, let me introduce you the third idea for today, which is actually a three-year endowment plan. Now before we get there, I invite you to smash the like button and press on the subscribe. Because from the previous edition of November 2021, where to park your cash, I guess this is a popular series. And I actually launched one new one every few months to keep you abreast as to what are the latest offers. So if you like this kind of topic, smash your subscribe and get notified. So let's move on to the third idea for, of today, which is a three-year endowment plan. And before we get there, the Singapore Savings Bond, if you do three years, the average return is 1.09%. But if you are looking for three years, you're okay with it. Then simply hop on to Attica. They have a thick three-year endowment plan and the guaranteed rate is 1.62% per annum. I checked around already. If you hold it to maturity, indeed 1.62% per annum is the highest rate. I've actually featured this product in the previous edition. Just as a recap on the qualifying criteria, you must be a Singapore resident with a valid NRIC or FIN. If you're a foreigner, you must hold the valid work permit, employment pass or social pass and you must be between the age of 17 to 70. And starting amounts for this is $10,000. Simply head to the website, everything can be done via my info. If you think this information has helped you, simply add in my referral code, R99327. And with that, I'll say a big thank you in advance, because for every referee, Tick actually pays a small referral amount. And after that, do share with your families and friends, simply using your own referral code when it's created.
This is a standard endowment plan and is actually guaranteed by SDIC via the Policy Owners Protection Scheme. For individual life, there is a cap at $500,000 on the guaranteed sum assured. I didn't know before if you're looking for something that has flexibility, look at money market funds. Let me show you my findings. This is a comparison of four of the best money market funds in the market right now. What you see is a two-year annualized return. The best performer is Lion Global SGD Money Market A SGD. Average return is 0.88% per annum. That is depicted in the yellow line over there. The good part about money market funds is if you have a fund supermarket account, for example, there's no surcharge for purchasing. You can actually buy very small amounts like $1,000. Whereas if you buy a Singapore savings bond, you need to pay a $2 transaction fee when you buy and then a $2 transaction fee if you sell. So the money market fund is a lot more flexible. You can go with small amounts. You can even do regular amounts if you want to. And if we look in terms of the one year chart, it looks still clearly that the Lion Global SGD money market fund is the superior one of them all. The other three may be too low yielding in my opinion. You might as well use back the Singapore savings bond. So all in all in this market climate where there is risk of interest rate increment. Money market funds are the ones that are most stable. Even short duration bond funds have seen certain losses. And most of the cash robo portfolios use short duration bonds and have seen certain losses in this last recent six months. So hopefully with this sharing, you kind of know where you can actually park your cash. And let me do a quick recap, which is the first, you can actually do into fixed deposit. Quite possibly CIMB is the best at 12 months, 0.65%. The second idea is to go into Singapore savings bond. For one year, you can get 0.52%. The third idea, if you are willing to tie up for three years, is take plan at 1.62% per annum. And the fourth idea is to go into money market funds. Quite possibly, Lion Global SGD money market fund is the superior one. And using last two years as an example, it has delivered 0.88% per annum. So hopefully, I've given a good description and simplified which one suits you the best. And with that, let me run to wholesale bonds to end off today's tutorial whereby it's a bit more complex, but it suits for big amounts of savings. In my work as advisor, I touch on bonds quite often. They can even be leveraged. And today I'll show you an idea that is proposed by Bond Supermart. They've actually shared on Gokulan's bond and it actually pays 3.4% in coupons and the maturity is 10th of August, 2025. So as of this current moment, if you are looking to purchase it, Simply look at the R's yield to maturity and it sits at 3.024% per annum, which means if you buy it right now at the R's price, when you hold it to maturity, your average return is about 3.024%. And your holding period right now is about three and a half years as depicted in this box. This is a senior bond, but it's also unrated. But Gokulan is a company that, you know, if you are in Raffles Place, you definitely have seen Goku Tower. But I'm just not too sure whether it's worth to get 3.024% for Goko Land's bond that matures in three and a half years time. Instead, what caught my attention reading that analysis is actually OUE. In terms of market cap wise, Goko Land is 1 point something billion, closer to OUE than CD development. However, because it has a lot of residential projects, you can see over here that the light blue line has actually came down quite a bit after cooling measures were announced. OUE Limited on the other hand, doesn't have residential projects, it's mainly commercial. I would think that the OUE bond on the other hand is a good comparison point. That is my thought. And as always for a bond, the minimum amounts are $250,000. If it fits you, look for my links below and I'll actually get in touch with you on a one-to-one -one basis. With that, I'll sign up for Mia. As always, thank you for staying true for this whole tutorial. And smash or subscribe and I'll see you next one. Take care and goodbye.